Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Elavaris, and welcome back to Let's Learn Root. Today, we are going to be continuing our tutorial series teaching you guys how to play the various factions of Root through the digital adaptation presented to us by Direwolf Digital. And we are going to be learning the Vagabond. So, the Vagabond is a very interesting faction in this game, and it's some people's favorites because of how different it is than the other factions. So here we go. The wily Vagabond wishes to gain fame, or infamy, in the midst of this brewing conflict. He scores by completing quests for the creatures of the woodland and by aiding in harming the other factions. So here we go, cat setting up in the top left corner. The Vagabond. Here we go, in the middle. Um, the vag Your Vagabond character is represented by a single pawn that can move and fight like a warrior and begins the game in a forest. You can see this is where forests actually come into play now because Vagabonds are what interact with them. Being early risers, Vagabond may slip between forests and clearings each birdsong. Let's slip into a clearing. Slip is a very specific action uh, that if this text disappeared, I could actually show you. But slip is effectively a one-time thing you do at the start of your turn that just moves you into an adjacent forest or clearing. So it wants us to slip here. These are your actions, starting actions. We get more than this. Your available actions are mostly determined by the items you hold in your satchel. When an item is used to perform an action, it is exhausted. You can't take that action again until the item is refreshed in birdsong. Ruins are scattered across the map that hold new items for a vagabond. Explore the ruin in your space using your torch item. So every item the vagabond has, you can see we start right now with a boot, a torch, and a sword. Each of these performs a very specific action, um, and we can only take that action with that item. We cannot take the action of a boot with a different item. Um, there's a very few specific cases where items can do different things um, based on the, the exact vagabond you're, you're doing or you're using, but we're not worried about that right now. There are actually nine different types of vagabonds, and this is the thief vagabond. And he has a special ability they probably won't touch on in, in this tutorial, but yeah. Um, so I'm going to explore here, and exploring a ruin is how you really are going to get your early game items. We just got a hammer. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> explore gained you one victory point and a hammer that can be used to craft cards from your hand. Move into the mouse clearing to your right to craft a card requiring that suit. So the crafting pieces for the Vagabond are quite interesting. The crafting, the Vagabond uses hammers as crafting pieces, but the crafting piece for the hammer is the suit of the clearing you are in. So right now the hammers act as fox crafting pieces. When we move to a mouse clearing, it's going to act as a mouse crafting piece, allowing us to craft the mouse in a bag. Each hammer you exhaust contributes one one towards crafting cards with a cost matching the suit of your clearing. Collecting more hammers allow you to craft more expensive cards. Craft mouse in a sack now to score one victory point and gain a bag item. And one victory point for the craft. Excellent. The number of items you can hold is limited by the six slots in your satchel. Each bag you acquire increases the amount of standard items you can store in your satchel by two. The bag, coin, and tea items don't take up room in your satchel and provide their effect automatically without needing to exhaust them. Most of your items are exhausted, so let's end daylight and rest. All right, let's do that. And we got a, uh, a mouse card. Cats are just doing their thing. <clears throat> there are a lot of concepts with the Vagabond that are going to be important to explain. I'm not explaining a lot of them right now, just until the tutorial gets us a little bit farther, and I can talk about some of the optimizations you can make here. 
It's going to teach us about aiding in a second, I think, because of that craft. So, during Birdsong, you refresh three items. This makes their actions available again. Now, if you have less than... Um, <clears throat> if you have less item or more items exhausted than the amount you refresh each turn, which by default you refresh three items a turn, and every root T you get increases that by two. But if I have four items exhausted, I would get to choose which three I unexhaust. So we're going to slip into the forest. You cannot move into a forest other than by slipping into it. Now move into the mouse sympathetic clearing to the Woodland Alliance. So up here. We could have also done this by slipping to this fox clearing and then moving north as well. You can give a card matching your clearing suit to another player in your clearing to improve your relationship with them. This is the aid ability. So I can click aid and I can click aid in the Woodland Alliance and I can aid them this bird card. Now I could also aid them this mouse card, but the Woodland Alliance, as we know from the last episode, is quite scary and we don't want to help them that much by giving them three free points. So we're gonna give them the bird card instead. Birds are still very useful to the Woodland Alliance as we know, but yeah. Uh, you must also exhaust an item of your choice to aid. Exhaust your bag. So we we already have a... Well, we don't already have a bag, but... Um, we have four spots available. If we lose two because we take out the bag, that's fine. And we should also note that the special items they talked about, the bag, the tea, the coins that perform their effect automatically, if they are exhausted by aiding, for example or if they are damaged, which we haven't talked about yet, they will move into the satchel. So if you ever exhaust your bag, you will effectively lose three item slots, which is very important. And you really want to keep an eye on that because if you end your turn and have more items in your bag than you're allowed to carry by your bag slots, you have to throw items away permanently from the game. If the player you aid has crafted any items, they will give you one in return. So, I mean, they call it trade, but you're kind of just, like, taking it. We give them a card, and we get a crossbow. So now we're actually full up. You're on items. We can't get any more items. Thank you for the aid, friend. Be careful with that crossbow we gave you. Exhaust them. Exhausted items always take up room in your satchel, even those three I mentioned, and won't provide their effect until you refresh them. So we don't get extra bag space until the bag is refreshed. The crossbow can be used to remove warriors or actually buildings as well, if there's no warriors defending them, without needing to battle. You can even use, oh yeah, there we go, it says it. You can even use crossbow to remove a building or token, so long as its owner doesn't have a warrior there. Use it now on those unsuspecting cats. Now this is actually a pretty dangerous thing to do really early on, and I'm going to talk about why in a second. On guard, that wily vagabond is no friend of the Marquis. Oops, I probably should have mentioned that killing enemy warriors will make them hostile with you for the rest of the game, such as the life of a vagabond. You should also note that if you kill them in any way, so if I if they attack me and I have no weapons but I ambush them, that also makes them hostile. Once an enemy is hostile, your infamy scores you an extra point each time you remove one of their pieces in battle on your turn. However, you must exhaust an additional boot to move into spaces with hostile warriors. And this is what can make it very dangerous to go hostile this early. There are cats everywhere. This is going to make traversing the map a massive pain because I can slip and then I have no boots left. Use your sword to battle their weakened army. The maximum number of hits you can deal is determined by how many swords you have, even if they are exhausted. But I can only attack with an unexhausted sword. So I can deal maximum one hit. One zero, nice, kill the cat. And I'm gonna get one point from that. Press continue button to complete turn. So one thing I wanna kinda note here, um, as the Vagabond, you should not really be going out of your way well, most of the time to aid items in the early game unless you're grabbing like a hammer or a root T. Um, 
Root Tees are extremely important for the Vagabond because as you can see, it's very easy to go through a lot of your items in a turn and you want to get, you want to unexhaust them faster. But these ruins are your main source of items in the early game. And like aiding for a crossbow is really not the priority right now. Some of these items are quite valuable. We got the hammer right away, which is awesome. But the four ruin items are actually always the same. They just spawn randomly in, in different ruins. So the, the four ruins you saw um, are actually blocking building slots. And there's it's always in the same four clearings based on the map. So we're on the autumn map. Um, so it's these same four clearings that will always have ruins. There are only four items that can appear in the ruins, and that is a boot, a bag, a sword, and an anvil. But which ruin they spawn in is random. So realistically, like we don't really want to go a turn just grabbing a crossbow. Like We should not be going hostile with someone this early. So we want to be very careful about that. Now we just got a T, and that's amazing. Cats are coming in. They're triggering outrage. They're probably going to attack us. And they're triggering a lot of outrage doing this. Yep, here they go. They're probably going to damage. It's going to teach us about damaging items. This doesn't seem like a fair fight. Yep. So now, we now have to damage items. The damaging is a different system than exhausting. They are, in fact, pretty separate and don't usually impact each other too much. So... When I damage an item, I can no longer use it. And it'll probably tell us that in a minute. So, boy, we're going to need the torch to explore. The hammer can be used to repair items I've damaged. We will kind of want the bag still. We're going to damage these three. We're not going to be fighting. We really don't want to fight. We don't have time to be fighting right now. So we got beat up. You can see black eyes, not ideal. Another thing I would like to note is that as the Vagabond, pay attention to where Woodland Alliance have sympathy. Because if Woodland Alliance revolts on top of you, that will actually damage three of your items. So that's very, very important. You get to choose, but yeah. So we're going to refresh our bag because we need bags. And we'll refresh the boot uh, and the sword. Many of our items were damaged in your last battle and are useless until we repair them. Slipping into the forest lets you repair all your items during evening and will protect you from being attacked on enemy turns. So it's going to direct us to do this. This is the main way to repair a bulk of items. There are a few actions you can take in a forest. Press continue to move to evening. So this is the mitigation factor. Vagabonds can never be removed from the map. Um, Vagabonds can never be removed from the map. They're not a warrior that can be removed. Or no one, no one can move a vagabond on their own on the vag on their own turn. Uh, the only person that can move the vagabond is the vagabond. So uh, the vagabond cannot be removed, but all their items can be damaged. And when all your stuff is damaged, your mitigation factor is to go into the forest. Now, when you're in the forest, you can uh, you cannot take any actions. The only way you repair any everything is if you end your turn in the forest. So pretty much, you have to slip into the forest and go straight to evening you repair everything and you refresh or you unexhaust any damaged items so you repair and unexhaust damaged items and that is very important if you have like 12 items and they're all exhausted you can't go into the forest and get a free unexhaust that's not how that works you only unexhaust damaged items which is important um but yeah, so if we ever want to repair in bulk, then we just go into the forest, we skip our entire turn. Now that your items are in tip-top shape, you should be ready to take on a quest. A bear is rampaging in a, in a mouse clearing nearby. Slip there to see if we can help. Select your quest action to see what you'll need to fend off the bear. Fend off a bear in a mouse clearing. Items require a torch and a crossbow. To complete a quest, you need to be in a matching clearing in a, in a clearing matching its suit and exhaust the items required. This is actually a really bad idea because we haven't even um, finished exploring our... We need our torch. The torch is the only thing that allows us to explore ruins. And we haven't even done that yet. So if you're in a real game, you don't want to be blowing your torch on a quest until you've finished exploring ruins. 
or you know you don't want the item there. Pick your reward. The victory point reward for each quest is increased by one for each quest you have completed in the same suit. One victory point's not super valuable, but two cards could get us something very cool. And this is generally what you're going to do with your early quests is, you know, I could have pulled a T with those two cards, which would have been huge or another craftable item. As we know, items are very important. Uh, one victory point is really not a huge deal compared to that. So now we can't explore, unfortunately, because we're a monkey. Uh, well, not because we were a monkey, because the game told us not to. <clears throat> but what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to aid. Because uh, the Wooden Alliance right now can revolt on top of us. So we are going to aid them a bird. I'm not going to be crafting both these coins for a while, I imagine. So I am going to aid them a mouse card using... I'm not crafting anything. Oh, no, I, I can craft a root tea. So I'm going to aid them using a boot to take a boot, which is nice. So now I have another boot. Awesome. Your effort is appreciated. Aid us again to show you a true comrade of the Alliance. That is also very important. Um, as the Vagabond, your relationship tracker, which you don't... Oh, here it is. Um, so the way your relationship tracker works is you start at indifferent with every with every faction. When you aid a faction a single time on one turn, you will increase your relationship by one. When you aid them two additional times and two additional times on the same turn, so a different, like it can be a different turn than the first time you aided them, but you need to aid them twice more on the same turn, you will increase your relationship to two. And then when you aid a faction... Well, and you'll, and you'll get two victory points for that, as opposed to the one you got for getting to one victory, for one uh, one here. And then, um, if you aid them three times on the same turn, you go to allied status with that faction. And when you are allied, that's actually very important. Um, you Every single card you aid them, once you're allied with them, gives you two victory points, which means you can explode in victory points in the late game by like questing for cards and just aiding, aiding, aiding. It's kind of nuts. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you ever damage any of your warriors, though, you go to hostile and you cannot recover from hostile. So other people, if you have a sword in your inventory and people see you're going for like aid, sp aid spam, they will often attack you in the hopes that you deal one hit back to them in the battle, which will then cause you to go hostile with them. But we, before, uh, well, actually, we don't, uh, I guess I could aid them again, actually. It's probably not a big deal. I'm going to aid them again. I'm going to aid them this bird card. Generally, in a game, you don't want to be aiding the Woodland Alliance too much um, because they're very explosive. So take this with a grain of salt, but... You know, we want some items here, and the Wooden Alliance isn't very good. So we're going to aid him to get our relationship up to two, because we aided him now twice in the same turn. So we aided him that, and now we're going to go ahead, and we're going to attack. Oh, can't. What? Why not? It's not letting me attack the Sympathy. That's really interesting. You are allowed to attack Sympathy with a sword. Um, it's odd that it's not letting me. We're going to craft the Root T. But one thing to note... Killing enemy buildings or just pieces in general that aren't warriors will not make you hostile. So if I kill a sympathy token, I'm not hostile with the wooden lines. It's only when I take out a warrior that I'm hostile. So I can't really fight anything. I could fight the cat, I guess. I guess I might as well fight the cat for a point, eh? Are we going to damage something? Yeah. Uh... Damage the crossbow for now. You know why? Because it's probably about to teach us about getting revolted on. Well, it might. I don't know if it will. Alright. After you complete a quest, you, you draw a new one. You can review your three active quests anytime by selecting your quest book. And one of the things you'll find about... Um, <clears throat> about your quest book... Is that quests are actually 
very important for the Vagabond early game. If you have some good quests, there's a pool of quests that require different items. And some of them are really bad. Like all these ones that require torches and tea and coins and stuff really sucks. Um, because you just don't have those items in the early game or the ability to use them. Like I got to use a torch for exploring and getting items out of the friggin' ruins. It's like turn three or four and I only have one item out of a ruin. Um, you don't want to be questing with that immediately. So we've already reached the next relationship level. Um, to improve your relationship to the second and third levels, you must aid two and three times respectively in a single turn. Other players don't have to have items for trade to aid them, but you do have to give them a card. Each time you increase your relationship with a faction, you gain more victory points. When you reach the final level of your relationship, you'll become allied and earn... Okay, here we go. So it's explaining what I said. So, well, it's my goal again to aid them twice. And it's really not recommended here to be giving them so many cards, but... Oh well. Are they going to revolt on me? Nope. Oh no, they're just placing sympathy. Mobilize some troops. So I'm going to... I have five items I can refresh now. We're going to refresh all these. We're going to stay here. Uh, nah. Nah. We're not going to stay here. We want to be able to loot that these ruins. Um, okay. So we're going to go ahead and aid with an alliance. Command Warren. Going to exhaust a boot. And one thing you will note, the Vagabond does not trigger outrage by moving into clearings. And the Vagabond ignores rule. So the Vagabond can move between any clearings that are adjacent. If they have the boots for it. Remember, you need an additional boot if you move into an enemy clearing with a warrior in it. So, because the cats are hostile, if they have a warrior in a clearing, it takes an extra boot to move into. This does not apply if they only have buildings in that clearing, or tokens. So, I'm only probably going to move once. So, I'm going to exhaust my boot to aid them. And I'm being dumb, so I might as well give them a coins, right? Oh, we'll give them, we'll give, we'll give them the bird card for now. We don't. We want to keep a boot. We'll give. We're not going to use our sword this turn. And uh, we'll aid them again using our hammer. Now we are allied, and we got two more points. Explore another ruin, complete another quest, and score fifteen points to complete this scenario. Yeah. So now I want to talk about exploring ruins real quick. Usually when you're when you when you start a game as the vagabond you're given the choice of starting in a forest. Although this isn't really a choice when you start to play the game more because you realize there is usually one forest that is between all four ruins. This is not always true on certain maps, but on at least the two you have available to you on the digital version, uh this is true. So you generally just start at one between all four ruins and then that way you can kind of decide based on your cards or based on what other factions do, which ruin you want to search first. Usually it's recommended to start at, at a ruin um, that is at the end of the path. So these four ruins are connected, um, kind of like, you know, this bunny is connected to this one, and there was a ruin here that is not here anymore because I explored it. So these two are connected, and then this one's connected to this one, and this one's connected to this one. So it doesn't make sense to start exploring in the middle of the path because then I've got to like move here. And then when I move like up to this bunny, I've got to like double back and get over here. You, when you're playing the Vagabond, you, you want to think about completing your turns as efficiently as possible. And as a result, you generally want to start at the ruin that is at a ruin that is at the end of each, like the end of the connected ruins line. Um, there are situations where you don't want to do this, like other factors of like oh maybe the eerie player is playing the god of war like charismatic leader that's fighting all the time and he started up here maybe i don't want to start the game in this clearing or in this clearing maybe i want to start here if i don't have any boots if you have a boot what you'd probably do is is explore one of these and then run because you don't want him coming and smacking you immediately but i don't really have that threat here so we're just going to walk over here we're going to explore. 
we're going to grab a boot. Excellent. So there's a sword and a bag left up for grabs. Our quests kind of suck, unfortunately. Now, the cats are hostile, but we'll notice they have actually crafted a bag, and I could actually take the bag off them. I don't know why... It's thinking I'm the Woodland Alliance. That's kind of weird. Or they're putting me in this cutscene as if I'm the Woodland Alliance. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> don't want to revolt in there, so doing that. As has the Vagabond again, you want to be careful of Woodland Alliance sympathy. You generally don't want to end your turns on top of it if they have the opportunity to revolt. Yeah, here they are. We're glad we're not in that clearing because then we would have had three items blown up. They're going to craft sappers. Why would you do that? Okay. Train some officers. So the reality is, I mean, this game is making it look like you're a friend of the forest, but the reality is you are very dangerous. And if you get enough swords, you can start going to town and smacking people up. So you'll find people aren't very friendly to you. Just because you aid them doesn't mean they're going to be friendly to you. And a lot of the time, aiding is more beneficial to you than it is to them. So they're not going to love you just because you aid them. So don't expect that if you're playing Vagabond for the first time. So we want to explore. We're just going to go over here. We're going to be efficient. We're going to go over here. We're going to explore this ruin. Uh, quests, again, kind of suck. Nothing we can really do because we're exploring. Well, I guess it wants us to complete a quest. Fine, fine, fine. Torch and hammer in a fox clearing. Or a torch and sword in a bunny clearing. Uh... Torch and a hammer in a fox clearing. I mean, I guess. Yeah, we'll do that here. We don't need a victory point right now. We'll go for cards. This is usually what you want to do with any of these plus one victory points. Just want to grab cards for the chance that you get some good craftables. But now all I need to do is really just... I just completed a quest. Is really just aid the Wooden Alliance because I'm giving them, like, I'm getting two points every single time I aid them. Which is kind of broken, so. Just gonna aid them again. We'll exhaust another item. And there we go. I just completed a quest. Yeah, okay. It updated. So there we go. That's the Vagabond. Or at least an introduction to the Vagabond. And this is a very simple Vagabond. Um... This is the Thief, but they didn't actually give you the Thief starting items. What you'll see when you play Vagabond is you'll get the option to pick one of the ones you have available. If you're on digital, if you're playing the board game, it's just whatever ones you, you have uh, with the, the boxes that you bought. On digital, it's based on the expansions you bought. Um, but each Vagabond has a different set of starting items, and each Vagabond also has a different special ability that you did not see in this tutorial. This Vagamon is generally the thief, and the thief can actually exhaust their torch to steal a card from someone in the clearing that they're in. So, um, which, which is quite cool, and he starts with a root T, which is awesome. And this one, you know, it was just like, it just gave us whatever items were required to have a decent tutorial. But, yeah, so that's the Vagabond. Um, those are some little, I hope you guys enjoyed the little tips and tricks in there. I am not a Vagabond expert, um... And to be honest, I'm actually not that great at the Vagabond. I've played it a good few times, but it's it's really not my area of expertise. Other people have uh, made some excellent guides on the Vagabond. Uh, so if you want to see more of that, uh, there is the YouTube channel Neva Kaneza, who has his Getting Good series that I have mentioned before, and he has an episode on the Vagabond that is quite excellent. So if you want to take a look at that, look at that if you want to learn more about it, you're very welcome to go over and look at that. But there we go. That is the tutorial for the first uh, four factions that come with the base game. And next time we get into another episode of Let's Learn Root, we are going to try out the Lizard Cult followed by the Riverfolk Company. And then we'll be done with learning the base game. And I'll be able to start showing some multiplayer gameplay. So yeah, that's about all. I would like to thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers, guys.